Yeah, so what's up guys? Uh, my boy from Taraji Eco Farm and today we'll, do, we'll be doing another farm tour. Uh, this is March of 2024 that we are filming this. And we just want to show you what we are going to grow this season and what's already on the farm. We'll also show you uh, a bit of activities that we did uh, for this past week. So stay tuned in and welcome to Taraji Eco Farm. If you are new here, remember to subscribe and share with your friends. So earlier today we harvested or we planted some herbs that we got from the supermarket. Uh, that is basil and also some mint. We planted them on the raised bed garden. And yeah, looking forward to feasting on them um, once they are mature. Yeah, it was very fun to plant with the kids. Uh, it's some of the activities that we like to do with them on the farm. So now we go back to the farm tour to show you what's been going on on our farm. So to start off, uh, we start off with sugarcane. If you've been following us, you know that sugarcane is one of those things that we planted a while back and we've been enjoying them. So these were the very first sugarcane uh, that we planted and this was the second one. So right now we are feasting on this batch as we already finished that one, but we can see others that are maturing. And uh, I think if you can show them on my right, uh, we have over 200 canes, an estimation of about 200 canes. The majority of them are here, but we have others on the lower part of the farm and some uh, even somewhere near the local tree over there. So we have over 200 canes on the farm and Currently, we are not planting any more sugarcane. So I think we have sufficient to carry us for uh, quite some time. Let's have a one of the sugarcane that is ready that we'll be snacking on this afternoon. You can see how big it is. And our sugar cane are very sweet and they're organically grown. We don't spray any chemicals to this and they are usually very, very sweet. So this is what we're going to be snacking on this afternoon. So over here, we have the biggest loquat tree on the farm. I don't know whether it's going to give us any fruits this season, but it looks quite sizable uh, to give us some fruits. So looking forward to having some loquats. Um, you can see here the roots are a bit exposed. It's because the chicken come and dig around it. So that's why the roots are exposed. Our chicken usually roam around this area. This is one of our tree tomatoes. Let me just say that uh, our farm is really, really uh, low maintenance. But uh, we do have a bit of fruits, quite a number, more than 10 that are already on this tree. And you can see one has started ripening. Yeah, so you should be enjoying this soon. Organically grown. Very nice, very tasty. This this is the second season that we'll be eating tree tomatoes from this tree. In previous videos, you might have seen that uh, some of our chicken used to trespass to the farm and eat our cabbage. They ate quite a number of them. And our collard greens, also known as kuma. So we decided to put up this fence. Uh, just to uh, put a barricade so that they don't go to the farm. And it's helping a bit, although they are also very, uh, the chicken are also very wise, they find ways sometimes to also go back to the farm. But this really helps a lot. One of the crops that we've planted this season are potatoes. This is just one small bed of potatoes. We have two such beds and uh, I intend to plant more probably in sacks or containers because there is no more space on the farm. So this is just one bed and then we also have another one over there. So we have another one over there. Yeah, just a few potatoes that are growing but they look quite healthy. It's not been raining for long. So if you're wondering, uh, this is what a uh, more than one and a half year old colored green plant looks like. Uh, and it started raining so we are going to be getting bigger leaves but this is what it looks like it's actually taller than me yeah it's taller than me but why i like this variety of uh, colored greens i don't know the actual name 
it is the plant that uh, I found the farmers on this area are planting and it's resistant to diseases. I have bought seeds, uh, other seeds for collard grains and I'm going to show you one of them. Uh, and they used to get very sick and they flowered after one season. But this, uh, this is the fourth season, I guess. Yeah, it's the fourth season that we're having this. It's not flowered, uh, never gotten diseases. We have some more right here. The same, uh, they are from the same uh, type of collard grains. I only have two types so far on the farm, but this is the best. I like it the most. It's resistant to diseases. Yeah. So this is the second type of collard green that I planted from seed. I actually uprooted most of them because uh, they would get sick at the stem and start rotting. So even these ones, I, I think I have about less than six plants of this one of this type that are still remaining. I prefer what uh, the other one that I just showed you because this really gets sick. I'm not sure what it's called, but it's a type of collard green. So now, uh, you know, when you eat avocados in the house and you throw those seeds on the farm, you can see we have so many avocado trees over here, very close to each other. But for now, we are just letting them grow because uh, we could use these uh the trees to do some of the activities on the farm but eventually we'll just have one avocado tree over here and get rid of the of the rest they are i think one year old they are quite big actually we do have another apple tree next to the sugar cane that we just showed up there it's bigger than this one so yeah hopefully we'll get some apples I don't know what variety it is. We just bought uh, from uh, one of those nurseries. So we don't know the variety, but let's see whether we get something from this. So uh, you can see some of our chicken uh, in a small forest that is near our farm. That's as far as they go uh, to look for food. It's very close to our farm. So that's, they're just looking for worms uh, under these uh, blue gum trees that are near our farm. Over here, uh, we have some peas and some yellow maize along the edges. And here we planted some carrots, but uh, because of some erosion, I had to redo the planting. So here we have some carrots and also some yellow maize along the edges. Um, this part of the farm where we've planted the peas is part of the area where we don't usually get uh, a lot of harvest because of the blue gum trees but uh, hopefully we'll get some peas usually when i plant things around here they don't grow but we're hoping for the best so over here we have a uh, saget uh, it's one of the most popular vegetables in the area that we live in but this is the first time i'm planting it so hopefully it does well so you can see the seedlings are already out and just next to it we have uh, what we call the African nightshade. You can't see it now because it's very small, but the seedlings are already starting to become a bit bigger. It's also the first time I'm, plant I'm planting it, also known as managu. So we'll see how it does. So here we have the mulberry plant. And what I did, uh, one of my neighbors has this plant and I just asked for a stem and just planted it here. And it's growing well, it's doing well, so far so good. So soon our kids will be enjoying uh, the fruits of this tree. So this cassava plant you can see, we planted last season as the first time that we've done cassavas on this farm. We may have not done it the best way. Uh, if you can just focus on this stem. I think we were supposed to lay the stem horizontally on the ground, but we actually just planted it like vertically. But I think we were supposed to do it horizontally. You can tell us in the comment section how it's done. It's our first time, but they are growing. So at least we'll get some cassavas from this place. So over here, we have marigold flowers or plants. This is a French marigold. Uh, they say it's good to 
help in controlling pests and things like that on the farm. But there's a downside. If you can see below it, we have a lot of seeds. Okay? And somehow these seeds also find themselves in the whole farm. So this season, we are going to have a lot of trouble weeding because we'll be weeding out a lot of marigold. And a good example is here. These are marigold. All these are marigold. We have some here. So this area are planted tomatoes, but there are a lot of marigolds around here. I had already removed some this morning, but we do have a lot of marigolds on the farm that we need to get rid of. Over here, we have our collard greens that uh, we planted in sacks. So we'll, we'll have a, quite a bit before the sacks finally give in. Like, uh, I'll show you one of the sacks that had, has given in where we've planted sweet potatoes. But uh, this is the same kind of collard greens that I showed you up there, the one that was more than one and a half years old. So it's the same. But in some sacks, there could be the other type, uh, but very few plants of that type. The reason I like these ones, as I said, is because they are quite disease to tolerant if you compare to the others, and they don't flower as fast. Yeah. So finally, uh, we discovered this is a pomegranate. One of you commented and actually affirmed that we used to say this is a plum. It's actually a pomegranate. We have three of these trees. I don't know at what point they start giving us fruit, but we'll wait and see. Over there we have some sweet potatoes, and then here we have collard greens. Now this sack seems to have both types, so if you can. This is one type of collard green, and this is the original one to this area. So this one I was saying it really gets sick and flowers very fast. So over here. If, uh, if you've not watched our last video, we had a lot of cucumber plants over here. This is what used to support them. We ate a lot of cucumbers last season. Right now, what is growing is what we call a thorn melon. Uh, you can see it has thorns that can actually prick you. These are thorn melon. I can see three of them. Uh, quite small at this stage. But those are thorn melons. But I've also planted some cucumber seeds. They are... At the moment, they are quite small, but uh, I'll use the same structure to support them like last time. Uh, next to them, we have this bell pepper. So one thing I don't like about bell pepper is that they take forever to germinate. So these are from our last season, but now we are going to enjoy them. You can see how big this is. And by the way, if you know when to tell a bell pepper is ready, just comment down there. We just pick them when we see they are big enough. But, you know, let us know how you do it on your farm. So these are some of the raised beds on our farm. Uh, we've planted quite a bit, but uh, they're quite small right now. But we'll be showing you as they grow. Uh, we still have some crops from our last season, like this ginger crop that you can see here. I don't know how healthy it is. <laughs> uh, but it's growing on the part of the farm where we have a lot of shade because of the blue gum trees. So, yeah, you can let us know. And also part of farming is some of the things that find themselves in our compost that are not supposed to. So we just clean them up. So I spoke about uh, growing food in sacks. And see, like now this sack has given in. We've not even grown something in it for two seasons. It's just one season. It's already given in. So these are some of the things you should be prepared for uh, when you're growing food in sacks. So previously on this part of the land, we used to plant maize, yellow maize. But now I just have a few plants. Probably like, uh, actually like 30. Yeah, they are just like 30 plants. Here we've done some onion seeds. So here we'll be having onions. And this section will have a few cabbage and here we have uh, spring onion. And you can see, and uh, we also have a lot of arrow roots that we planted. And one interesting thing that we've come to learn about arrow roots is that they actually produce uh, 
smaller arrow roots on the side. So here we planted only four, but now we have one, two, three, four, four more that have uh, also started growing. So in total we'll have like eight. So uh, probably we don't need to keep replanting arrow roots. Maybe they'll always uh, give us more on the side, which is quite interesting by the way. So these ones are quite big. They are the biggest ones, uh, you, as you can see. We don't think they are ready. Uh, we had checked on one of them just to see whether the arrow root has formed. But uh, we still have a bit of time to wait before they are ready. So this is the first raised bed that we did on this farm. I'm yet to dismantle it. Uh, but what I did this season is just rotated what we grew. Last season here we had lettuce um, and some cabbage and things like that. We still have a few eggplants from our last season. So those ones I didn't, uh, I didn't approach them. But we have one here that is drying up and I'll get rid of it. Uh, so now we have planted some radish. And over there we planted... Uh, what we call uh, dania or coriander. We actually use seeds from our farm. They germinated and then uh, we didn't have rain for some time. So I had to replace them today. Okay. Uh, here we have some bulb onions. And I've also done some more seeds for onions that I can transplant. These are some of the crops that... Uh, are still from our last season. On this section, I've planted um, tomatoes. So they are still uh, yet to germinate. A few have germinated. Uh, they are quite small, but this, this area will have tomatoes. This season, I'm trying to plant as many tomatoes as possible. It's one of those crops that I think we only feed ourselves like maybe two or three percent but would like to increase that to probably 50 percent and eventually 100 percent so here we have another tree tomato and it has actually started fruiting so this is very interesting uh, we are going to get some nice tree tomatoes from this uh, it's very healthy it's a very healthy tree it's very healthy and it's taken less than a year. So if you want, if you're looking for quick fruits that you can grow on your farm, start with such things. If you eat tree tomatoes, those are some of the things that will give you fruits very quickly. So, yeah. Then over here, I was just trying to weed. We have some pineapple. I have no idea why the leaves are turning yellow. But uh, we hope that they are going to do well. The rains are back, so just giving them time yeah and probably in a year we should eat our very first uh, pineapple from this farm over here we have our plum tree the one that we used to confuse with pomegranate and actually it had produced one plum <laughs> so that we were able to actually confirm it's a plum just one so do you think it's going to give us fruits this season uh, probably it gives fruit once a year, so we'll wait and see. Then, just next to it, we have this amaranth. Let me tell you something about amaranth. I have tried to grow amaranth on this farm. It doesn't grow. But since this one grew as a weed, we just let it grow. And we're eating from it. So some of the other things that we are growing this season, uh, some have been here, uh, some are new, and some we just keep planting every season. So we have things like uh, a pear, pear tree that has been here, quite small, this one here. Uh, we have sweet potatoes, uh, we have spring onions, uh, we have strawberry, okay, and uh, what else do we have? I think I've mentioned most of the things. We have beetroot, 
we have some pepper, the hot pepper, and we have some passion plants uh, that we also grow in this season. Uh, and as usual, we've shown you our citrus fruits. Now we did, we once did a video where we showed you how to prevent termites uh, from attacking your citrus plants. Uh, what we discovered later is that it's a very temporary uh, solution and uh, we are looking for a more permanent one. Uh, so if you have had a termite issue on your farm with your citrus fruits, what have you done to it? It's a permanent measure. So I'm just walking to one of the citrus plants. So, so this is one of them. Um, the the masking, uh, what, the, the double-sided tape that we put last time is uh, like here. You can see it here. But now what happens is uh, the stickiness ends with time. So it no longer helps with uh, preventing termites from climbing the tree. So if you have had this issue, let us know what you've done as a permanent solution because we have a lot of ants that are still messing up with our citrus fruits. So this is our very first uh, banana plant. If you've been following us, you can see how big it is. But we don't know at what point you're supposed to harvest it. I don't, I don't know if the bananas are fully formed. I don't know if they are mature. So if you know how to check, I can see some of the things have dried up here. How do you check when a banana is ready? Just let us know uh, in the comment section. So this right here is one of the watermelons that <laughs> has, uh, I think, the, big, the biggest that we've grown so far. But uh, even before it could ripen, uh, we it was infested with worms, so we decided to give it to the chicken. You can see how they are enjoying the watermelon. So even if we didn't get to eat it, at least <laughs> our chicken got to enjoy it. Uh, we still keep trying to plant watermelon on the farm. So far, we haven't eaten any watermelons from the farm. But we'll keep trying. So here we decided to get rid of one of the banana suckers. Uh, I think we have four or five on this part of the farm. So we decided to get rid of one and uh, give some of it to our chicken. They really like, I don't know what the middle part is called, but it's usually whitish. They really like eating that part, so we're just going to show you how we prepare it for them. Yeah, and the rest of it we are going to put in our compost pit and we can use it uh, later on once it decomposes. Guys like blue, girls like pink, girls like rainbow and pink, and boys like blue and black and white and brown. That is the strongest boy, mom. Yeah. That is the strongest boy. The strongest boy. <laughs> that is the strongest boy. That is the strongest boy. That is the strongest boy.
So later that day we did some work on our homestead just to clear some overgrown French marigolds and see whether we can plant uh, some new flowers. So we're just getting rid of... Yeah, the French marigolds on our farm really grow big. Uh, so we're just getting rid of some of the old ones. Uh, for these ones, we'll retain them until they become a bit old. So that's it for today's video. Uh, we'll keep you posted on what actually grew to maturity. We'll take you along the journey, even as we harvest, as we do other activities on the farm. And... Uh, it's always a pleasure to have you here. If your friends are also interested in self-sufficiency, yeah, let them know of our channel. Yeah, And if we've inspired you in any kind of way, if you have any kind of advice to give to newbies like us, we are quite new, but I think we are gaining some experience right now. So just go to the comment section. Uh, give us a tip or two. Yeah, If we've inspired you, tell us how we've inspired you. And see you on the next video. Bye-bye.